I wasn't recording live. Hi. Hey, y'all. Did you wonder what happened to me? Well, a funny thing happened on my way to the show. So I, I just did like four minutes of a show on Instagram. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show, y'all. Welcome to Sugar Pearl Studio Kitchen Live. I'm a mess this morning, this afternoon, this evening, because um, I got caught up watching a movie, came on at 7.04, thought I hit um, go live, and did not. So y'all weren't live a few minutes ago when I was running my mouth. Instagram was live. But I am recording live now. Hey, everybody. Everything you need to know is right there, okay? So, um... I'm broadcasting now, for real, on Sugar Pearls at Carla Renee. That's Facebook, Facebook, Carla Renee and Sugar Pearls. And YouTube at Sugar Pearls. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Um, Hey, my favorite senior citizens, mom and dad. Hey, everybody. Look, I know, brother. Look, Tommy was like, hey, sis, I was going I forgot to hit the uh, start button. I know. I know it's been that kind of week, um, but great things are happening. I'm going to dedicate this recipe to somebody tonight. Um, and hey, Krishan, <laughs> thank y'all for being patient with me. I am so sorry. I was supposed to look, I'm 10 minutes late for my show on my main pages. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and tuning in. Hey, mama and daddy, I'm here now. Okay, so I was talking about this Tuscan chicken roll recipe. Instagram, just hang on, okay? I got to get them caught up. All right, you good? Okay, good. All right, so I was talking about this Tuscan chicken roll that we're going to make tonight, and it's a recipe, but not his recipe, that I got from Chef Alvin in Virginia Beach, Virginia, when I used to do some waitressing. Um, Great black chef. Great black chef. Phenomenal. And one thing he used to use, like in a chicken roll, he this is not his recipe, by the way. So if he sees it, then you know he ain't got to see me. Okay. So um he used leeks. This was my first time having leeks in anything. Um, he made a leek soup one time. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. But you may have seen this in the store. This is a leek. All right. It comes, it looks almost like a wild onion, all right, but it's not an onion. Okay, the um, once you peel back the stalk, as I was telling the Instagram watchers, the leek, um, very sandy, very gritty, very dirty. So you really got to peel back. I'm going to show you. Look at all the, oh, here it goes. I wanted to show you how dirty it was. You can't see it this fine, but, oh, here it is. Now, this is just straight up mud. Look at all that dirt. So you don't want to cut that, <laughs> you know, all of that can end up in your food. All right. So this is why you peel the leek back all the way back to the most tender part and make sure you kind of rinse through, but down um, so that if there is any sand, usually in, in this part right here, it's where it's real tender, real green, um, you won't find any sand. Okay, so make sure you clean it thoroughly. Um, but leek has a very light, oh, slightly licorice, but very light flavor to it. It does have a little onion undernote, but um, it's not an onion. Um, put it in your soups and stews. Leek is really good. Anyway, when I cut up the most tender part, of the leek hey <laughs> this is what you see it's almost like a fluorescent green right that's what you want that's going inside our roll okay hey hey Jeanette <laughs> I know oh I feel so bad I was late tonight but thank y'all for being patient with me all this stuff tonight I found from the farmer's market just except the prosciutto except the prosciutto we're also gonna put you don't have to do prosciutto some people go oh gosh i just saw tommy i was supposed to call you today 
I got started so early this morning that I just I I lost track of time somewhere, obviously, because I was late for my own show. <laughs> okay. So uh, I owe you a phone call, brother. All right. But the prosciutto I got from Aldi. Okay. I think it was like three dollars or less. Okay, so now that I've got my farm-raised chicken breast, this was one chicken breast that I cut in half and then flattened, um, flattened for dear life. So I covered my board in past plastic and paper, and then I covered the chicken breast in plastic, and then I got to use my mallet to get out frustrations, and it was oh so good. So the only thing we're going to do now, hold on, I've got gloves. We'll put some gloves on tonight, all right? And that way I can work with the chicken a little better. Probably wrote a little bit or two. All right, now this chick, this Tuscan chicken recipe that we're making tonight, we're going to do with some green beans that I only seasoned. It. Oh, I put some grapeseed oil on it. Um, What else? Garlic paste. And um, salt, pepper. All right, but not a whole lot. Okay, we'll put that in the oven with the chicken in just a little bit. So this is what you've got. If you flatten that chicken breast out, this is what you're going to have. All right. If it's got a couple of holes, don't worry. Just don't overwork it. Okay, so for this, let's get a little salt. We're going to season both sides of this. Not too much because it's very thin. Now, when the meat, because the meat is very thin, we're not going to have to keep it in the oven for very long. Okay. We're also going to sear it first. Um, I got some spinach already sauteed. We're going to layer that all in there in just a little bit. Now, this recipe, okay, this Tuscan chicken recipe that I'm giving you. <laughs> okay, baby. Um. It calls for sun-dried tomatoes. Do you know how expensive sun-dried tomatoes are right now? It's ridiculous. So we're going to do a little something to substitute that, okay? And what we're going to use is tomato paste. Just regular old tomato paste, okay? It's cheaper. This, was, this can right here was like 32 cents. All right, let's get a spoon. Let's get some tomato paste in here. Make sure I give it enough to. I'm not going to use all of that, but I figure I might as well get it all out of the can. All right. Now, it's not just the plain old tomato paste. You know, I'm a little extra. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Um, some chipotle. Mm hmm. Some chipotles in adobo sauce. All right. This might have been a 50 cent can. All right. So your chipotles are peppers. Yes, I'm not going to use a lot, but I am going to use this one. It's nice and intact. It's coated with that lovely sauce. Just throw it on in there. Okay. And to this, we're going to add a pinch of sugar. You know, um, tomato paste can be very tart. And it doesn't really have, it's got its own sweetness because of the tomatoes, but um, not a very balanced sweetness. So we're going to help it just a little bit by adding a pinch of sugar, just a pinch. Okay. All right. Let's put that down in there a little more. Because I, I want to break that pepper up. Okay. Oh, I got oil left over. Hey, I made some um when I made that bread this week. Wasn't that bread pretty, honey? Um, no, I still got some. I ain't eat it all. Look at you. But I made some oil for it, and I'm gonna add this oil to it. There we go. To kind of loosen up what we got going on. All right. Now the paste, if you're not going to use, we're going to use a mascarpone cheese. But if you don't want to use mascarpone, 
just you can skip it. Let's push it down a little more. Might need to add a touch of water, I, but you don't want this loose, okay? So let's do a touch of water, just a touch, okay? You want to keep it very pasty, okay? Pasty. And this will be spread on top of some other stuff. Okay. I'm gonna add a touch or guess what? I'm gonna I've got some skewers that uh my skewers are extremely long. So I cut them and put them in water because I'm going to skewer the chicken later, but I don't want the skewers to burn. Mix, mix, mix. It smells so good. I love sun-dried tomatoes, but honey, I'm just not willing to pay $5 for this. Okay, good. Leave that there for a second. Now, uh, we can leave our gloves on. Mascarpone cheese. Mascarpone cheese, um, if you've ever had tiramisu and that nice creamy stuff in the tiramisu is usually mascarpone. It is much softer than a cream cheese. Very nice for, you know, tiramisu or if you're doing like a, a stuffed French toast, mascarpone, that's what we use, okay? So um, for this recipe, we're just going to take a dollop of the mascarpone and just spread it. Okay, and this will be our glue. Are you watching Instagram? Y'all can't see. I'm going to turn you down so you get a little more of a... There you go. Okay, get that chicken spread nice and evenly. All right. Now, to that, we can add a little of our... I don't think I want to do the paste just yet. Layer it however you want. You may have different... Um, if y'all are doing this together. Hey, Tisha. Hey, Rada. <laughs> hey, everybody tuning in. Thank you for being here. I'm so sorry I was late. I'm here. <sighs> Honey, good stuff happening. Um, speaking of good things, when I put the chicken in... I'm going to tell you who this recipe is for tonight. All right. So on top of our mascarpone, we've got our chicken painted with it nice and evenly. And you've got the prosciutto, nice and thin, kind of smoky and sweet, salty, briny prosciutto. And just layer it right on top of your cheese. Ooh, this looks so rich already. Like the prosciutto makes it look like a different kind of sexy, you know? I'm going to show you in a little bit. Yeah! Okay, so now the prosciutto is stuck very nicely to our painted chicken. To this, we're going to, let's do our spinach next, all right? And I've got spinach already sauteed. All I did was a little bit of grapeseed oil and a little bit of salt, period. That's it. You ain't going to be doing so much. All right, are you watching Instagram? Hey, you see out, you just... 
just doing it like a pizza. Can you imagine doing this one night with your boo? Yeah. Like if you if you want it, and you know, y'all have different things on it. And maybe maybe they don't like spinach. Well, don't do yours with spinach. Maybe they don't want mascarpone. Well, we won't do yours with mascarpone. But it's a nice little boo boo dinner. It's it's, it's cute. Look at that. See y'all's coming together. All right. Now I'm just gonna press ever so lightly. Because I want to make sure it's on there because we're going to roll it. I know stuff is going to come out just a little bit, but we want to make sure we've got everything nice and adhered. Okay, to the spinach, let's add our bright, beautiful green leeks. I've got some red onions sliced. Let's go ahead and get some. You, Your boo might not want onion. <laughs> okay. Again, I say, this probably could have been our Valentine's meal, huh? Could have been. All right, all right. I think that's enough. Just in case, you know, you get lucky, get a kiss. Okay, onions. You follow me? Yeah, do it how you want to do it, honey. Just make it sexy. All right. To that, I'm going to add my, all of the stuff I got from the farmer's market today, y'all. Go to your local farmer's market, wherever you live. There is one somewhere near you. Um, and just, just look around, see what they got. Something, sometimes I'll find things at one stall that I don't see at another. Um, sometimes things are duplicated, but that's okay. Um, when you go, you can support different vendors. You know, um, and I do like that. These are regular mom and pops, you know, running their stores from the farmer's market. So good stuff. Uh, let's take our Chipotle. <laughs> honey. And just get some dollops on there. How about that? I'll spread some of it out, but, you know, I ain't too concerned about it you know because it's gonna it's gonna melt down in there okay Lord, you should see this can you see it <laughs> i know honey i amazed myself all right i'm gonna get this rest of this spinach out of here put you back over there we'll work with y'all tomorrow okay do you see this masterpiece coming together? Look at that. And we haven't even rolled yet. I got my oven on 350. We're probably going to put it in because I banged it really thin. Um, it's probably going to go for about 15, 20 minutes. Ooh, that's good. You know what I want, though? Mozzarella. Can I put, you think I can fit mozzarella on there? I'm going to try I'm gonna try. Let's see. Let me get rid of these gloves. And see if I've got any left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, honey. I won't do too much. Okay. How about that? some pieces throughout oh that look cute oh my goodness that looks so cute honey look i know look like you can eat it right now but you better not okay we gotta roll this up and then we're gonna season the back side i just put those okay shucks shucks darn it and roll. Yes, you're gonna have a hole here and there. Um, if if you really went crazy with the mallet like I did, it's okay. It is okay. Okay, and roll. Now the beauty about this, I'm not worried about some of the stuff falling out, but the beauty about this is ooh, see how some of my stuff is falling out, but look at what you got. A beautiful log. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Now 
those skewers that I had, I cut them down. Yeah, I cut them down so they can fit my pan. And what I'm going to do now, because I want to keep this as intact as I possibly can. Let's just go through it in certain areas. Just say as many as you need to hold it together. Don't ask me how many. I do not know. Okay. Let's do one down here where, where Juicy is falling out. Tuck Juicy back in there. Matter of fact, we're going to tuck all of you. There you go. <laughs> yes. Tuck. Okay, let's do another. Okay. And another. All right. Okay. Spiked chicken. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. It looks a fool right now, but don't worry, honey. <laughs> We're making magic. All right. Let me get my, my cloth here. We didn't overdo it with the cheese. Okay. I'm convincing myself over here. Just let me have my moment. All right. Okay, so now that we've got our chicken, let's go ahead and heat this pan up. I want to give it a, a little crust where I can front. Let's get a little bit of grapeseed oil or whatever oil you have. Just be careful that it doesn't smoke too fast. Okay, hit this with a little salt. Be very, very careful. So, Pippa. Mm -mm -mm. A nice little heart healthy meal. Yeah, with a little bit of cheat in there, but you got so many veggies and stuff. You know, just go for a nice walk after them. All right, so now that we've got it seasoned on the inside and the outside, it's very important to me, um, we're going to sit it aside, and then we're going to sear it in just a little bit, okay? Let me, let me sit y'all, oh, I don't want to have my green beans, because I'll forget that I'm supposed to be cooking them. I'll sit right there. Uh-huh. You go over here. Oh, the week has been so long and I'm just, ugh. I mean, I don't feel bad. I just, <laughs> I hope I use my time wisely. I think I did. Got a piece of chicken here. I'm going to stick that back on there. All right. Give it a sear, give it a sear. Turn it up. Okay. Put you aside. Okay, so as I was saying, <laughs> forgot to finish the sentence. Um, you can do these ahead of time. If you don't mangle your plastic like I did, do it in, in the plastic and then wrap it. Wrap, roll and wrap it tight and then put it in the fridge. And you can leave it there the, the night before, the day before, if you, you know, had a couple of them you wanted to do and it's already rolled in and prepped. Okay, so that's the beauty of these. You can, um, you can just get them started early. So, ooh, it's already starting to slip off the pan a little bit. 
Um, we don't want to pick it up. We don't want to touch it or anything just yet. We just said, thank you. <laughs> Very easy preparation. Yes. Hey, Mika Mika. <laughs> yes. Hey, Rhonda. I'm Rhonda, y'all, by the way. I'm Rhonda. Ah, did I tell y'all I was in the film? <laughs> I know. I got to tell you more. We had such a great rehearsal the other night. Um, it, It's just, it's awesome. Just being able to create and be in creative spaces. So um, be on the lookout. I'll have more information for you as we go on. More from our fearless director, Tamika Green, the writer, the director of My Mother's Prayer. And I star as the, one, the okay, the annoying middle sister. That's nothing like me, right? Annoying middle sister, really? Guess who's really an annoying middle sister? Tamika didn't know this. Me. I'm I'm a middle sister. And I'm, you know, sometimes I, I overstep. Sometimes I do. And that's just, that's just so it's a it's a true to life role. Uh, more coming soon. <laughs> okay. I'm going to attempt to flip this. Cause I want to see her on both sides. Oh, what you thought this was? Oh, we want to have it light skin on one side and then eat this elbow on the other. No boo. Yeah, she's cute. Put it on there. Let it sear. Give that a sear for about five minutes just to get a little color on the other side. Then we're going to throw our green beans on top of it and we're going to put it all in the oven. And I'm going to tell you what I'm making it for. Okay. All right. Ooh, it smells amazing. It smells like a vacation getaway. And I'm somewhere in some villa living it up. Um, speaking of vacation getaway. Shout out to my cousin Cheryl. She favors me out here in Vegas, baby. Honey, I've been so scared to go to Vegas, but I'm ready now. If somebody want to go to Vegas, I'll go. I'll go. I ain't scared no more. I'll go. <laughs> I just want to go somewhere. <laughs> change the scenery for a second and the food oh my gosh the food that's what i want to go for hey seven blessings seven y'all make my night um i'm gonna go ahead and put oh it's starting to drip a little juice in the pan with all the let's see And then make sure we got enough foil to go. You know what? Those spikes ain't gonna let me put it in there the way it needs to be. So I'm gonna do something else. I got my grill pan in there. I'm gonna put them on the grill pan. Okay, that's better, right? Yeah. All right. Let's get the grill pan. Oh, good. I, I forgot I put oil in it already. See, I was supposed to use that. Yeah. Put it in my grill pan about the same amount of time you're going to do your uh, chicken. Unless you like your green beans cooked to death. Um, I like mine to have just a little crunch and turn a real bright green. I don't like when it gets soggy and then they start turning like that ugly kind of brownish green. Now, if you're doing them on the stove, on in the pot, that's fine, but for like French green beans that you don't pay some money for, I want those cute. So I don't want to cook to that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, let's get that back in the oven. And now we're going to put the chicken in the oven too. That's all we need. We don't need to flip it back. We know how it looks. Okay, go ahead and stick that in the oven. Chicken goes in. And green beans go in. They are on 350. We're going to let that work for about, we'll peak at 15. We may peak at 10. I don't know. This oven, um, it, it gets super hot. So we'll see. Um, when I'm just about taking, we're going to have this Tuscan chicken with the green beans, a little bit of rice. I didn't make no gravy, no sauce or anything like that. You can if you want to. Um, but this is just quick, simple chicken, rice, and beans menu. Okay. Um, quick, but chicken, not like you always have it. You know, how often during the week are you rolling your chicken, boo? You're not. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is something for you to try. All right. So Get your chicken breast, flatten it out, and and stuff it, and roll it, and live. And then you can slice and get these nice little medallions. Oh, uh, we'll see. Um, but that was half a chicken breast that we used. We just flattened it out until it was like a sheet. Okay, so I got to tell you about a special woman. All of you are special. It every one of you okay all right um this is not to say you're not okay but i gotta shout her out because she did something extraordinary and um we need to be supporting her whether you know her or not you know me so trust that i know what i'm talking about when i say um that she's the real deal She's the real deal. Um, this meal tonight, our Tuscan chicken meal, is dedicated to Lisa H. Carter. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa, my sister. So Lisa is uh, one of those good girlfriends um, that you know, when I want to be my most raggedy, ratchet self, you know, she's, she's that voice. She's that voice for a lot of people. Um, and I know she's that voice for me, but Lisa just um, did something extraordinary. And I, I told you about it months ago that it was coming and now it is here. Lisa H. Carter. Miss Carter, if you're next, wrote a book, honey. It's called Behind the Smile, How My Pain Prepared Me for My Purpose. And it's on Amazon. And you can get it right now for under $20. Honey, you can get it for under $15 right now. Lisa H. Carter, the book is called Behind the Smile. It's got a picture of a 13-year-old girl. You can tell she a city girl, too, because she kind of got that, that little pose, that city girl pose, you know? And um, there's a little baby boy that she's crouched with. Well, the little city girl is Lisa h carter she was 13 when she had her first child yes yes and because i know her it feels so good to say like i know her and she has shared her story with me. She's someone that I've, I've cried with and we've cried together and we've shared laughs and celebrated together. I didn't know that little city girl, Lisa, boy, I wish I did. Phenomenal woman, 
incredible story. The little boy that she's crouched with is her son, Marlon. Maul. And um, Lisa's story is incredible. I'm not going to tell her story. It's hers to tell. And she does it in Behind the Smile. How my pain prepared me for my purpose. You got to get it. I ordered mine this morning because the work check hit. And I was like, mm, I'm going on Amazon and I'm ordering a book. I went to Amazon and ordered the book. Hey, I ordered the book this morning. It will be here Monday. So you can order it right now too. It's incredible. Her, her story is incredible. She is incredible. And to see her and to know her and to love her and to know that she's a woman with this story that she doesn't use the story as a weapon. She doesn't, she's not ashamed of the story. She doesn't um, um, use it to prop herself up in any way she ministers she ministers period every day all day her story is hers um but it's not it her story doesn't bust through the door before she does you know you know for for some of us it's like we got a story we got many stories all of us and our story will bust through the door before anybody really gets to see who we are now and what we're standing in now because we're, you know, I got to tell myself. That's, yes, yes, you should tell your story. Um, but the way this woman's story has shaped her life over the years and continues to do so um, is a lesson. It's a powerful lesson. And she is a powerful teacher. So um, find the book. Um, it's on Amazon by Lisa H. Carter. Behind the Smile, How My Pain prepared me for my purpose. And you'll get to, you know, hear, you know, all about those days of her growing up in Boston um, to where she is now and the family um, that she has helped to build, and the family that she's raising up now. You got to read it. I can't tell you no more. Okay. I can't tell you no more. I can't. Um, but I, I think it's so important for all of us, you know, to have those stories. Absolutely. Um, but not be crippled by it, you know? To like use the stories to actually fuel you to your desired outcome your goal, your dream. Um, and we know plans don't always work out, <laughs> you know? You know who, who can say that they know anybody who has a perfect life? You may think they've got the perfect life. You don't know. You don't know what people are dealing with. Right? But those stories are so important and so powerful for us not only to tell and share but to um, to use to engage people who may feel left out. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you're telling your story, then hopefully it's, it's for that purpose, you know, to uh, to help somebody else see what's possible because they've seen it in you. Sometimes. That is the ministry. <laughs> that, is, that is it. How are you walking through your mess? 
you know, not just not just on pay. How are you actually walking through your stuff? And sometimes we, ooh, I'm I'm so happy that I have a therapist now because I can actually break down on a regular basis and and say when I feel a mess and raggedy and not strong and and weak. I can say that without hesitation. Um, mm. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you. She is amazing. She's an amazing woman. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, Tamika said, your story is always a dictionary for others to read. So true. Hey, Anna. <laughs> so true. Yeah, it's, it's the story that people get to see you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put on a lot of stuff, but yeah, people always watch them. They always see. And we're not always so graceful in our movements. I will be the first to admit. Sometimes I want to have a tantrum. I'm going to put this in the um, microwave for 90 seconds. Microwave jasmine rice, yes. I made it at home, it's homemade. <laughs> I'm not gonna do 90 seconds. I'm gonna do two minutes. I never believe those pouches. Do you? I wouldn't. Mmm, yes, it is okay to take. Hey, Sandra. Hey, honey. Oh, thank y'all for being here. Share the show. Y'all have been sharing the show. I got to say, I go back and I watch the show. Like as a viewer to see what you see. Now I'm going to see me being late tonight on my main page. Child. Um, But I, I want to be able to see what you see. So I'll go back and I'll watch and I'll nitpick and tear it apart and all of that. Um, But I get to see y'all sharing too. Thank y'all for sharing the show. You don't have to. It's called Sugar Pearls because it's named for my two grandmothers. If you don't know the story, go to the website, check it out. Sugarpearlsonline.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and read it. Um, it. It's all about, you know, making making food and home and love all come together. Because that's what Sugar and Pearl did. Somehow they did it with nothing. You know, with what seemed like nothing. Um, but they did it. You know? Ooh, my chicken looks so good. Oh, that's the rice. Maybe I was supposed to vent it. Let's try. Stop. 26 more seconds. <laughs> Honey, it's a live show. What can I say? Darling. Jesus, I hope I didn't kill this rice. I hope I don't have popped rice when all of this is done. Woo! Thank you. Turn it off. Ciao. So, um, I was talking, I'm, we probably got about six more minutes on the chicken. We're going to peek again in a little bit. Um, cause my green beans are starting to turn bright green, which is what I want. I don't want them cooked to death. Um, you may choose to cook yours a little bit longer. That is totally fine. Let's put this prosciutto up. I got that other half of chicken breast in there. And I think what I'm going to do, um, with it like tomorrow, tomorrow, I have to do it tomorrow. Um, let's make another one. That way I can do it cute for the pictures and everything. Um, so I had this thought and help me out. Sometimes, um, my grandfather will come to me in a dream. You know, me and granddaddy. Honey, that was my best buddy. Ooh, that was my best buddy. Um, 
so I get to see him from time to time, which is really nice. It's really nice. It's never sad. I'm not crying or anything like that. I sometimes he just shows up in my dreams. Um, but lately, I'd say the past couple of weeks, the grandmothers have been showing up in my dreams. So Grandma Pearlene, Pearl, and Grandma Sugar. And always I have the feeling, the feeling, granddaddy, now Grandma Singh, that we used to call him, which is Pearlene. Grandma Pearlene was at Grandma Sugar's house. Granddaddy was also there. Okay, so all my my three main grandparents were were at my grandma Sugar's house. Okay, I don't know if this has happened or not. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'm old enough to remember that. But um, every time I like just before I wake up, I always have this feeling that um, that I didn't have enough time. I didn't spend enough time with them, you know, um, especially the grandmothers. Maybe and maybe that's why I gave granddaddy so much of my time, because I knew I slighted my grandmothers. I didn't give them that kind of time, you know, um, but there was time spent. Um, but I was thinking and thinking about the dreams that I'm having, it's always like I'm picking up the dream where right at the same point every single time. But they keep showing up and they're talking and they're laughing about the quote unquote good old days, right? Okay, they're just sitting around laughing. Other family is there. They're, they're talking about, you know, having to go to the bathroom outside, you know having the slop hogs and all of this stuff that I have no knowledge of because I didn't have to do it, okay? But they had, you know, such a hard life. And as they're laughing and talking about these good old days, and I'm, I'm, I'm like watching through a window at all of this. And all of a sudden, it's almost like a camera zooms in on my grandfather who says, it wasn't always good times. Ouch. You know, it's <laughs> like, stop the party. Like, dude, do we need to get you some more wine or something so you can get a little more jovial? Granddad stops the party and says, you know, it wasn't always good times. And I woke up feeling like, one, I didn't spend enough time with them. I didn't have enough time. I felt like, you know, I lost time with them. But when he said that, I don't know if he said that like in, in waking life or not, but when he stopped that party and he said it wasn't always great times, it made me think that you know, we talk and we laugh about the good old days, our good old days, whatever your good old days may be, right? Um, and as much as we should laugh about those good times, um, reality hits often. And then we remember that not all the times were good. Everybody don't be, want to be reminded of your good old days. That was the lesson I woke up with. I don't know why, you know, um, you know, sometimes we get so eager to share these, you know, moments, these revelations, these good old days, memories with folks. Um, but we forget that they weren't good for everybody, you know. Um, some people lost a lot of stuff along the way and we shouldn't just like skip past that. That's important too. Yeah. 
that, that's why I still got this scar right here. <laughs> that's why I still got this burn from the oven because I was too lazy to doggone um, pull the rack out and pull the pot out. This reminds me, don't do that no more. <laughs> Look at this ugly scar. It is there to stay despite the neosporin and everything else I done try to put on. The memory is there. The scar is there. And sometimes we forget that um, when people lost those things along the way, it left scars or it left holes. It left stuff missing and it left some people broken and damaged and not everyone wants to be reminded of that. And that's okay because your story is still yours to tell. You ain't got to bring everybody along for the ride because some people gonna complain about the, the view anyway, <laughs> you know? But um, that's just a nugget from me to you. That came to me from a dream about sugar, pearl, and fuller. Not all the times were great. We did. We had some great times, but they were, you know, when somebody trying to trying to go back to the way things were, and it's like, hold on now, not all. Of I still have a scar. I still have a memory of what I was not supposed to do again. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's just a little, just a little love from me to you. I ain't chastising nobody, honey. I, <laughs> I preach to myself first. Okay, so I'm just saying, you know, don't feel no type of way. My toes hurt too. Boop. All right, let's check on this chicken, boo, because we about to eat. Now, typically, after you take this chicken out, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks so sexy. Woo! That looks sexy. Okay. Um, typically when you take this chicken roll out, you need to let it rest. Like you do any meat. All right. When you when you go from heat to room temperature or whatever. Let it rest. Let those juices just kind of redistribute throughout now we really flattened this boy okay so it's not gonna take that long all right it's done um but just remember that okay all right let's go ahead and take this out i feel like i have sneak i'm such a child <laughs> i am i'm just a big old kid hold on all right, let's take our green beans out. See, nice and green. Yeah, you don't want them brown. And then because we put them in this grill pan, look what done happened. See, you got some, you got some marks under there. Honey, that's flavor. That ain't number flavor. Well, see, it's brown. I can bring Instagram to see, y'all can see. There you go, all of that flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yes, look how beautiful. See? All right, let's go ahead and put you back. We're not just <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, stick that over there. Now let's take the chicken out. All right. I'm not gonna give it 15 minutes to rest because we ain't got that kind of time. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna go back and watch this movie that made me late for the show. Um ooh. But let me show you what's happened. All right, we've got a beautiful breast of chicken. Ugh. You're gonna have to wait for the next the next roll that I do because you should be able to see the beautiful colors in between when you slice it. But because we're not gonna let it rest, we might miss that, right? Okay, so I'm gonna just pull you back a little bit. Hey. <laughs> All right, and this is what we got. And what else you got down there? Honey, I know, Savage Bless and Savage. Look at that. Mm. Mm. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. 
let's get a nice plate. Mm. Turn that oven off. I don't want to be burning up all my electricity. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and take this out, sit it on our plate. Now, the cool thing about this thing is I'm not going to finish eating all of this tonight, so I get to put it in to eat for breakfast. <laughs> yes, honey. Uh, when it rests, after it's rested, uh, let's see, can you see? Oh, there you go. After it's rested, then you can pull those out those skewers okay they should come look how clean okay soak them in water first so they they come out nice and clean i can smell <laughs> my god i can smell the cheese i can smell the tomato from the paste and chipotle that we made i smell oh my i smell the mascarpone with this smokiness. Um, honey, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even waiting. No, I'm not. Why? Why? Okay, let's go ahead and pull that out. This is what we got, right? Okay, we got our 90 second rice. Ooh, shut up. Shut your mouth. Okay. Right, it is cooked all the way through. Oh, just a little. I'm not gonna use all of that. Okay. Just, oh, it's so fluffy. Oh, this is good. I may have to use this rice. So 90 second, my earthly grains. Oh, this is nice. Zero grams of cholesterol per serving. Oh. Yep, it sure does say it's here partially across the top for venting. That's why it exploded on you. All right, green beans here. We're not worried about plating tonight, honey. We, we gone. Just get them on here and get it in here. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's do a little more of that right there. Mm. Lisa Carter, your dinner's ready. Ah! And they go the prosciutto. Oh my gosh, the prosciutto. It looks so freaking good. Thank you, darling. Thank you. You see this? What gravy? We don't need none. Why? Honey, this <laughs> let's let's just dive in. How about that? Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit. Um, oh my gosh. I just want to see the middle. I know. I know. I'm just gonna you know what? let me use a serrated knife and that way I can keep it kind of intact. Okay. Oh, 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 oh the juice. The juice is loose, honey. Come on, give me the jouet. Give me the jouet. We want the jouet. Look at that. Look at that. You've got, look at that cheese and that smoky tomatoey sauce pouring out of there on top. This is your Tuscan chicken roll. Look at that prosciutto sticking out. Look at that mushrooms already cooked. Look at that, honey, dinner. Lisa better call to help me eat this food. Girl. Okay, let's eat. Let's taste. Okay, Lord, thank you once again for this masterpiece of yours. <laughs> I hope my friends make this dish. Ah, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yo, I, look at the other side. Look at this side. Look at that spinach in there. Look, look at that. <laughs> Honey. I have nothing to say except I made this. 
I know. Okay. Let's see. These three videos. Mm. 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 <laughs> Creamy, ooey gooey, tomatoey. This tastes like something you order in Tuscany, sitting outside your villa. Mm -hmm. This right here, you gotta make. You got to. The chicken is perfectly cooked because it was nice and thin. Y'all, I wanna thank you for watching everywhere you're watching from. Um, my family in Philly, thank you so much. My family in Georgia, my family in Alabama, Virginia, Maryland, Florida, um, honey. Do you know how happy that makes me? Oh, and uh, last but certainly not least, where I'm growing and bred, South Carolina, baby. Lynchburg for you. Mm, honey, you ain't made no chicken like that lately, I bet. I bet the next time you say you make chicken, that's something for somebody to get excited about. Mm. Come on. No more boring chicken. No more boring chicken. There's no reason for it. That 90 second rice hit though. <laughs> it hit. Okay. I gotta go. Um, maybe I'm past my time. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. I just want you to know, sugar, I appreciate you for watching and sharing the show for telling folks about this little black girl from Lynchburg, South Carolina that be cooking stuff on, on the internet. <laughs> Sugar, know that I love you. And I hope you love me back. Bye.